question is that this bill be now read a second time. I call the honourable member for Morton. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on the Copyright Amendment Online Infringement Bill 2018 and thank the member for Greenway for her considered contribution. Uh, I'll say from the outset that Labor supports this bill. Labor has a long track record of supporting Australia's arts community and creative industries and all, that come, all the jobs that come with that. And that especially includes supporting them by ensuring sensible reform to our copyright laws so that they are fit for purpose in a fast-changing industry. The digital era is upon us, and it brings its own challenges for the creative industries and the artists who have input into them. I know the blood, sweat and tears that go into the making a piece of creative work, whether it be a film, something on the screen or the small screen, uh, on the page, uh, uh, poetry or a, a book, or even through the airways, or the, uh, the small part of the author or the artist is left behind when they put out their piece of art. So it must be especially galling when a creative work is used without permission and without the appropriate payment to the artists and those who support the artists. Fundamentally, to do so is theft, but it also shows a lack of respect for the artists. Online piracy is a significant threat to the music and screen industry in Australia, as fast internet now allows us to download in record time, online piracy has taken off. Labor has already done some work with the government in this area in 2015. Uh, those changes allowed the courts to order providers to block access to identified pirate sites through an Australian federal court injunction. That was important because many of the pirate sites operated in overseas jurisdictions and are so out of the uh, reach of our own Australian laws. Blocking the sites themselves means Australian audiences are unable to access these pirate sites. Those reforms were successful. However, it is not easy to obtain a, an Australian federal court injunction, and it takes time, and there is cost associated with it. So, as soon as that door has been largely closed. What do unscrupulous operators do? Well, they find another door, or they uh, make it a door ajar with their crowbar and push through. So our laws need to keep up with an ever-changing copyright infringement landscape. So this bill will expand the services that will be subject to the previous reforms. Online search engines will be included. A federal court injunction can compel a search engine to take reasonable steps to not provide search results that direct users to copyright infringing websites. Sites that have the primary purpose or primary effect of infringing or facilitating an infringement of copyright can now be blocked. That is the intent of the legislation. This is a significant expansion of the previous reform, which was limited to blocking sites with the primary purpose of infringing copyright. This bill will also allow more flexible injunctions so that when a pirate site changes its, its address or access pathway, the injunction can be adapted without the need to return to court. To streamline the court process to obtain an injunction, this bill adds a rebuttable presumption that an online location is outside of Australia and therefore within the blocking mechanism of this legislation. So that is why I support this bill and why the Labor Party will support this bill. It is important that Australia's creative industries are protected and fostered. Our musicians, our filmmakers, our, mus uh, our TV production industry, our artists, our authors, they are all important to our culture and, significantly, to our economy. So many jobs associated with these uh, in artistic endeavours. The continued prosperity of our creative arts community is dependent on our creative artists being able to protect their original work and negotiate compensation for its use. So we're also looking after publishers, after film distributors and all sorts. The voice of Australians needs to be heard in our Australian books. We, uh, we need stories that are told by Australian writers. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I'm a co-chair of the Parliamentary Friends of Australian Books and Writers, uh, the co-chair with Senator Linda Reynolds, who has continued her role after taking, uh, gaining a, a, job, a ministerial position. So, Great to work with her. And this year, uh, Senator Reynolds and I hosted the announcement of the shortlisted Miles Franklin Award writers, uh, and it was a wonderful night. They told their stories in their books about us, about Australians. They have a national focus, 
uh, but also reach out all around the world, obviously. But they're still Australians telling Australian stories. Who else is going to tell those stories but Australian writers? And uh, obviously, I'd particularly uh, note the Australian publishers who support them. Without them, we would not have the enjoyment of uh, all of those books. Uh, well, from my youth, uh, and from uh, from going to teachers' college, books such as Such as Life by Joseph Furphy, uh, all of Thea Astley's work, the works of Janet Turner Hospital and David Maloof. Uh, and uh, I know that's a particular Queensland flavour, but Henry Lawson, so many other great Australian writers that, that have told our stories and make us what we are as a nation, a nation, of, a nation with a, the, longest history, uh, the longest history on earth, the longest culture, the oldest culture, the oldest word on earth is an Indigenous word, but also melding with that, that modern Australian story, the story from the from all around the world that makes Australia what it is. So how will our, our children hear these stories unless our writing community is able to prosper and thrive? And I'd say a particular, particular shout out to one of the recipients of the Queensland um, Premier's Prize for Literature, Michael Bauer, who I used to teach with many years ago and congratulate Michael. We have such a wealth of talented writers in this country, like Michael Bauer, but all of them struggle to make a living. It is so important that we protect their reward for the work that they do. Uh, not all of them get to tell their story uh, to overseas audiences, so it's important we protect every dollar that comes their way. And it is also important that the faces of Australians are seen on our screens and the stories that they tell are our Australian stories written by our Australian screenwriters. Protecting their industry protects our Australian stories for generations to come. Australian films have been acclaimed for, for many, many years. I've got a, a friend that works in the film industry, uh, Chris Holton, he's particularly uh, always has loved movies such as Breaker Morant and Gallipoli, to name, and obviously the Mad Max movies. But Australian movies, they do, do so much. Movies like Lantana, uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, uh, The Castle, Muriel's Wedding, Death in Brunswick, and I'd even throw in there The Rocket, Master and Commander, just to name a few of my favourite movies. These, they're all Australian stories, or largely Australian stories, that will now live on forever. And uh, in another life, uh, I was also, well, I, I still, I guess, uh, in a band that plays occasionally. We play to together every three years as a fundraiser. Now, we didn't, uh, didn't make too much money from our musical endeavours, uh, largely written by John Carrozza. Uh, and he was the lead singer as well. But we, we did play in our own voice. They were songs that we wrote, we played, and it was part of our Australian story. Uh, obviously, the best Australian music does, do, does that as well. It has an Australian voice, whether it be country music, whether it be classical music, whether it be modern pop music, rap music. So many of those uh, voices tell our story. I'll, I'll mention a couple of my favourite bands, particularly um, also with a Queensland flavour, but the Saints from Brisbane, you know, that were the, the cutting edge of punk, Chris Bailey and Ed Cooper and the, and the gang doing so much for, for uh, punk music back in the 70s coming out of Brisbane, but also the go-betweens, uh, Grant McClendon and Robert Forster, you know, renowned songwriters. And then uh, I'd also have to mention the Triffords from Perth. The point being, Deputy Speaker, we all will have our favourite Australian authors, Australian TV shows, Australian movies. Uh, Australian musicians. We must always be prepared to look after our artists, and, and this mechanism, the legislation we have today, will help to do so. So people must be prepared to su support Australian artists, and this legislation goes some way to making it easier to do so.